in shooting the video for making the Polk Total Station, a few of the videos uh, had some problems and I couldn't use them. And one of them was the uh, mounting the router plate. And so I'm gonna recreate that here. It's pretty simple, but it's worth showing you so that you'll see how I've worked it out. I, I made myself a template for cutting out standard router plates. So the one I use is the Woodpecker router plate. This is my favorite one on the market. Uh, they don't make this uh, phenolic one anymore. At least I can't find it online. They make the exact same router plate though in aluminum. It's a bit more money. I believe it's close to $100 and this one was closer to about $50. Um, but if I were buying one today, I'd buy the aluminum one. It's a better material anyway. The nice thing about the Woodpecker router plate is that it's designed really well. The, the inserts for the size of the router bit, they're changeable with just a, a spanner tool they give you. You just twist it locked, twist it in and out, and, they, and you get a few different sizes, and then you can buy additional sizes as well to keep the cutout close to your bit size. Also, they provide all the screws necessary for the particular router base plate, so there's no drilling and no fitting. You just screw it on and it fits. You do buy the plate that's appropriate for your particular router. The other thing I like about it is um, they have these countersinks, and I'll show you how I use these uh, when, I, when I cut the depth, but there's two on each side, and so um, I will actually overcut the depth of the um, cut so that this plate would actually sit in further in, and then I'll dial it in uh, with an Allen tool. Another reason uh, that I like this is that there is an adjustable uh, uh, set, kind of a set screw or a, or a, uh, a little plunger. I'll, I'll make my cut out a little bigger and a little deeper than the actual plate, and then I'll adjust it in and it's a perfect fit. The way I do this is I measure the plate, and then I just took a piece of scrap, three-quarter plywood, and I made a cut in the middle of it. I, this piece of scrap is large enough that I can clamp it down on the material I'm going to cut or on the bench top and still have room for the router to ride around it without bumping into the clamps. The dimension of the cutout is the plate plus one-eighth of an inch in width and length and that's because I use a template guide rather than a pattern bit. Pattern bits work great, you would make the hole the size you want and then it would fit right in. S similar if you're doing an inlay, that's how you do, you do that. But since I prefer using these upcut spiral bits, these half inch bits, uh, they make a really nice cut, they last a long time, they're not that expensive. I, all I have to do is add that eighth of an inch, which is the differential between the outside diameter of the cutter and the outside diameter of the guide. So I add that eighth plus a little bit more, again, because when I finish the cutout, I want it just slightly uh, larger than the plate so that I can dial it in to, for a nice firm fit. So the eighth I add on all the way around, or in length and in width, sixteenth all the way around, is to factor in the template guide. That doesn't make the actual opening larger. It makes it exactly the size that you've set it up for. So then I add to that a little bit. The, the dado in for the router plate, the thickness of the router plate takes up quite a bit of the thickness of the top. The top is a half an inch. So we're, we're leaving basically a little onion skin left. It's not enough to hold the router plate up for any length of time. So I back it up with another piece of half inch. So I've made the, I, I cut a piece of half inch plywood that the outside dimensions are what I need it to be. I put that on the plans. And then I found center on that piece of uh, backing material and I just made a cross line. And then my router template has uh, marks on it so that I just center them up and I know that uh, because trying to measure underneath would, would be uh, imprecise. So I just line up the, the marks and I know that I'm cutting uh, right out of the center of this board which is what I want to do. Now one other thing I did to this uh, router template is I cut myself some half inch strips. They're inside the hole so now I'm reducing the overall width and length of the router template now by one inch and that is because this is the backer material. I need the backer material smaller than the opening is going to be. 
So the first thing I'll do is I'll make the backer material and then I will cut out the opening, that's the smaller part of the opening, with the router using this template with these strips in it. And then I'll remove the strips and place the template on and make the, the dado all the way around and it works out perfectly. So the first thing I'll do now and the only cutting I'll actually do in this video will be to cut this backer out. My bench is already completed so I can't show you uh, actually doing it but I'll show you how I did it. I want to cut all the way through this half inch so I will set up my cutter so I go down flush to the top and then I'll just cut through a little bit more than half an inch so I'll get a good clean cut all the way around. The backer board is made. This will fit underneath the top and be glued. So the next thing I do is again, this, this wouldn't be cut out. I have a precise location for this opening that works with the holes in the uh, bench top. And it also is in alignment with when I put my fence on so that I can use it right behind the miter stand and still allow a nice rip path uh, for the table saw. So the placement of these three major tools uh, is, is very precise. So after I cut out the backer plate with the strips in place in the router template, I would have, I had my cross marks for the center of the plate where the plate was going to go on the bench, going this direction and the cross direction, and then I was able to use the same cross marks and just lay it on there and line it up perfectly. And again, the first cut where there's no cut out in the, in the bench, the first cut is the inner hole, which is the same size as this hole here. So I'll be, I'll be replicating this exact cut out in the bench all the way through. This won't be a dado. This will be plunging and cutting all the material away. And again, it'll be with, but it'll be before I move the strips. So I would set that up on the cross marks, then clamp the template in place with a couple of clamps, just the way I did for the backer board. Once that cutout is done, the next cut I would make would be the dado itself. So with the template still clamped in place, remove the strips, and then make the cut. But this is where I have to change the depth. Just like the width, I make it a little deeper because of the adjustable set screws in the plate. I'd rather have it deeper and adjust these so I've got it perfectly flush with the top of the bench. So what I do for that is I measure the thickness of the plate. My habit has been to use playing cards for shims to set up the difference, but I can just dial it in with this router. It has a very precise depth gauge. And so since I know that three playing cards is what I've always done, these are 128th of an inch thick. So three of them is a 32nd of an inch, but I have to do it in millimeters. So when I, when I measure them, I come up with 0.8 millimeters. So just under a millimeter more depth. So all I would do then is take the router, run the bit down until it hits the, the top of the bench. Again, it wouldn't be cut away in that case. So I'd run it down until it is firm on top of the bench top. And that will make all, that'll automatically calibrate it to the thickness of the template. Doesn't matter how thick it is, you could use half inch. Zero out the depth stop. And if I'm, a little, if I'm slightly deeper, I just adjust the screws a little bit more. The main thing I want to do is be consistent from table to table so that if I move this router to my other bench, I don't have to adjust the set screws. So for me, it's just having consistency from bench to bench. Um, whatever depth you start with, just write it down and use the same over and over again if you have multiple benches. Uh, again, so you're not having to 
change and adjust your plates if you move it to a different load. I have this particular router and router plate setup I use on this bench and on the, the, my larger workbench, so I need the two benches to be calibrated. Again, these strips are removed, so now it's going to cut a, the, the, a larger opening than this one by one inch in width and one inch in height. And I'll go around and make that dado cut, then remove the template, and then I would have this dadoed edge and this other opening, and it would be it would be pretty thin at that point, but it's still there. And then I would take take this backer board, put it underneath, and all I have to do is flush it up to that edge and glue it and clamp it in place. Now obviously I already have my backer board in uh, since I did it uh, to this bench earlier, but I would just clamp it with uh, two clamps on each side so it would take eight clamps and uh, let it set up. Now alternately you could make that first cut which is all the way through, take this, flush those up, clamp it, and wait for the glue to dry and then come back and make the dado cut. That might be a little safer. It's not the way I did it, but it's pretty thin, uh, about an eighth of an inch, maybe a little bit less when you, um, when you make this dado cut. So you're cutting into, you're, you're leaving very little wood there. So you might want to glue, clamp it in place, and then route into it. But either way you do it, you'll end up with a very consistent, very precise cutout. So your pl router plate will drop in here and in to any of your other benches as well. Another video that didn't make it was cutting the miter track slot for the router bench portion. This is cut so that the any fixture I have or purchase that uses the standard uh, miter track dimension that you'd have on a table saw or a router bench. Just like cutting the router plate, I just set up a template. This is a, an adjustable template that I have it's been retasked since I did it, so it's not set up to the right length or width. But you can, uh, you can use half inch plywood or three quarter plywood and just clamp it in place. But you set, you set that up and again, because I'm using a, a template guide, I had to add the eighth of an inch uh, to get it exact. And in this case, I didn't want to make it any larger, so I made it exactly one eighth of an inch wider. and. The width, did, the length didn't matter as much. It's kind of random where I stop it. I have this dimension on my plans, uh, but it doesn't really matter, just as long as it's far enough along that you won't bump in when you're actually using uh, any kind of uh, miter gauge or any kind of fixture that you have set up to ride into that. But it was a pretty simple deal. I set up the router to cut all the way through the bench. Uh, you're gonna take all that material away clamp your jig in place, make your cut, and then remove the jig, and then the, uh, shown on the plans is a strip of half inch material that backs this up, and so I install that after I make the cut, and that's also installed with only glue. So I put it in place, just ran clamps through, clamped it in place and let it glue up, and that's what I ended up with here. As you've seen through a lot of my different videos, I use router templates a lot. I think that a router is one of the most versatile saws available to carpenters today. It's kind of like an old-fashioned CNC machine. If you can make a template, your router will cut it out perfectly for you every time. So whether I'm cutting out the router plate, the miter gauge, or whether I'm making these cutouts, they're all the same. I'm using a template and then I'm just simply using a template guide and following that template and I get the exact same results time and time again. So hopefully this video has been helpful. Thanks for taking the time to watch.